Lecture 3. Food Contamination and Control The aim of this unit is to provide an understanding of microbiological, chemical, allergenic and physical contamination of food and to outline the importance of controlling contamination to prevent food poisoning. By the end of this module, you should be able to identify the sources of microbiological contamination, name the sources of contamination, define sources, vehicles and routes of contamination, and lastly, understand the difference between microbiological, physical, chemical and allergenic hazards. Types of contamination or hazards. Contamination is the presence or introduction of a hazard and this is stipulated in EC regulation number 852 forward slash 2004. A hazard is something which may cause harm to the consumer, for example pathogens in food, and these are present in raw materials or introduced at some time from delivery through the service. Firstly, there are microbiological hazards. These include food poison bacteria, spoilage bacteria, moulds and yeasts, and viruses. Next, physical hazards of teeth, and these are present in raw materials, packaging, from the structure of the building, from equipment, from personnel, and from pests. Thirdly, from chemical hazards, and these could cause acute diseases, which occur in a quick period of time, chronic diseases, which take a longer time to develop, or they could be carcinogens. And these include such things as industrial chemicals, such as PCBs, which are polychlorinated by phenols, pesticides from growing crops and pest control, veterinary residues, metals used in cooking, such as utensils, lead pipes, open cans in the fridge, from cleaning materials, they are used in storage, especially with cleaning in place, which we'll look at in a later section on cleaning, where there could be caustic soda involved. From waste chemicals, such as dioxins from incinerators, there's been quite a recent case in 2008, where they found excess dioxins in mozzarella cheese from Italy. Also excess additives from nitrates and nitrites. From packaging materials, such as the plasticizers used in things like cling film. The effects really depend on the chemical type and or the concentration. And the last type of hazard is allergenic hazard, and these are increasing problems. The body's immune system reacts to a particular type of food. A severe shock, or an anaphylactic shock, may result in death. They are present in specific foods, for example nuts. Next, we need to look at the sources, vehicles and routes of contamination. To control hazards, we need to know where they come from, i.e. the sources, and how they get into food or food premises, i.e. the routes. Sources can include people, for example staff and customers, from their hands, from their nose, via sneezing, from their mouth, bowel, skin, boils, septic cuts, spots and sewage. From raw food, such as vegetables, milk and eggs, meat, shellfish, water. From the environment, such as soil, dust and refuse or waste food. Also from pests, such as insects, their feet, vomit and faeces. From rodents, their feet, urine, faeces and mouth. And from other animals, such as pets and birds. Vehicles can include hands, cloths, utensils and equipment, hand contact surfaces, food contact surfaces. As regards the roots, a root is the path taken by food poison bacteria to get from the source to the high risk food. This may be direct or indirect via a vehicle. Cleaning, disinfection and good hygiene practices are essential to remove roots. We need to remove the source and or avoid vehicle and or provide a barrier to the root, for example cleaning and disinfection. This slide shows you direct contact cross-contamination and indirect contact cross-contamination. Direct contact is when the products 
for example raw, uncooked or high risk food are actually touching or in close proximity. Indirect, the bacteria are transferred to the high risk food from the raw food, which is the source of contamination, via a vehicle, which in this instance is a work surface, which hasn't been cleaned properly perhaps. Another form of cross-contamination, which is really direct cross-contamination, is by drip from raw meat juices dripping onto high-risk food. So it's essential, for example, if you're storing raw food and high-risk food in the same fridge, then the high-risk food must be above the raw food, and both items must be covered. So how do we control bacterial contamination? Well, we do that by removing the sources of the bacteria. For example, purchase food from reputable suppliers, check delivery vehicles, check delivery drivers, inspect food on arrival, immediate storage, a good integrated pest management policy, high standards of personal hygiene, including an exclusion policy, also a visitor's policy. So we've looked at controlling bacterial contamination by removing the sources. Let's look at another method, i.e. breaking the roots of contamination. This will depend on effective instruction, supervision and training, good design of premises and equipment, good hygiene practices and high standards of personal hygiene, protection of food throughout the system, minimise handling of food, segregation of high risk and ready to eat food from raw food using a colour coding system, effective cooling and thawing systems, segregation of fit and unfit food, cleaning schedules and systematic cleaning, and lastly satisfactory waste management. And the last control of bacterial contamination by destroying bacteria via thorough cooking to 75 degrees Celsius core temperature, by processing such as pasteurization, sterilization, UHT or canning, by disinfection and by preservation. Also, we need to look at preventing the multiplication of bacteria. We need to store food out of the temperature danger zone, therefore below 5 degrees Celsius or above 63 degrees Celsius. We can prevent multiplication by fermentation of the product, for example salami, yoghurt and cheese. Also by the use of preservatives, such as salt, sugar or acid. And lastly, by keeping dry foods free from moisture. So in summary, controls involve removing the sources, preventing contamination of food by breaking the root, preventing the multiplication of bacteria, destroying bacteria, and also destroying unfit, suspect or contaminated food.